Hello everyone, welcome to another week in my garden. We're up in the greenhouse at the moment and I, I just wanted to show you what I do with the peppers and the tomatoes as the tomatoes finish. I'll show you and then you'll see. When the tomatoes are finished, there's just a few left on here now. A few, couple more picks, these will probably be gone. I take out the tomato and cut it up into small bits, put it on the compost heap. I take some of the compost out and replenish what's left. I put a bit of Vitax in it. And then I put the pepper plants into the same pots. See now, the peppers are longer living than the tomatoes. And this one's been potted the longest now. It'll, it's got flowers coming and there's more peppers coming on the top since we potted it on. But that's what I'll do to all of the peppers and the tomatoes as they finish then it saves me taking them in and out the greenhouse every day just to show you this if you get this sort of thing the molding on your leaves of your cucumber if they get much worse than that just cut the leaf off and it'll grow another one at the top as you see it's coming along now I'll take it right along here and keep it going until it finishes there's loads and loads of cucumbers coming up but once I get it up and going along, then it will crop all the way along. So as the new leaves come, we can get rid of these dirty old ones. We don't like those, the look of those, so they can come off. It won't hurt the plants at all. Right, we'll finish in here for now. So hot in here. Uh, and we'll pop down the garden and do some other jobs. To I'm just down at the shed and I thought I'd uh, just give you an update on how the cuttings are going that, we ta that we've taken. These are the softwood ones, if you remember. So if you come round, we'll show you. These are the uh, dianthus or carnations that we took. These are two, they're a salvia, and we have it in the front garden, and it flowers right through the year. I don't know it's actual now. I know it's a salvia, you can tell with the smell of it. Choice here that we took, that's coming through nicely now. We took it, if you remember, it was yellow when we took them. They always go green while they're rooting and as they start to root like this one, you see they're turning yellow now. Those will leave for a little bit longer. If you remember the deep cuttings we took, well they all seem to be growing well and I see there's roots coming out the bottom. We know they're rooting well so I'll have a look at potting those up. That's that hydrangea if you remember that red one, very nice. Uh, the fuchsias. I have potted some, I'll just fetch one that I've potted and showed. This is one of the early ones that we took, they came out of this tray. These are the ones that were, I thought were dragging their heels a bit, but they're coming now. But this is the same, the same batch, because as you can see it's quite a big plant now. It'll have to be stopped, but if we stop it we can take some more cuttings. We just let it flower and then if we like the flowers we'll produce more of it. Another tray where we did that hardy fuchsia, Mrs. Popple. They're rooting well, look, you can see they're breaking out now. Uh, the, the hop for my daughter, as you can see, they're rooted well and gone sticky, so they're growing well. They'll be pot. I'll pop those up straight away and I'll put a cane in and band it. These, there's one there we've lost, maybe two. The second row, this row is actually sowing roots now, so we know they're doing well. That little flower there, that'll have to be pinched out. I've and that one don't want these to flower yet but they're doing fine the mint that we took because my wife liked it i got that ready for potting but i thought i'll hold on and let you see it it is rooting down roots are through i'll pot that in a very open compost because they don't like to be tight they're nice and loose in the pot now the roses that we're rooting in water you must be patient with these especially for graham if you're watching mate, if you can see, I don't know if you can see round that base there's some little nodules coming. They're the roots that are breaking out now and we're getting new growth at the top. They're running quite well. That one you can't see them but there are little white coloured nodules where the roots are coming out and there's a bud there beginning to swell so it will be asking for roots soon. This, is, this one nothing on that one yet but it's still alive as you can see so for patient we're all right with those so they'll be fine 
just a lot slower in water than what the iron compass. So there, that's as far as I've got with the cuttings. We seem to be doing rather well. We've lost one or two. If my wife can just turn and show that table over there, you can see the cuttings that I have potted are doing rather well. These are the lavenders growing well. And the rosemary, well, that's ready for stopping now. These are those other fuchsias. The potent tiller, the white one's growing well there. Now, we did some loopings from seed. I like to let them flower, like this one's a nice blue. And with my wife being very colour coordinated, if I can tell her that's a blue one, she'll be able to place it better than if I just say it's a green one. She likes to get the colours right. There's uh, some blackberries there and some gooseberries that were rooted off they're doing all right they're getting rather large those look so we'll be planting those in the autumn we'll put those in the fruit cage but that's your as you can see they, they're doing rather well no problem at all i think i lost two of the lavenders but the rain they don't like to be wet at all. I should have put them under cover when it was really wet, but I forgot, But I, so I lost two of those. Okay, so with other jobs to be getting on with, we better go down the garden and have a look. We're down at the potato patch. I'm going to remove the tops of the potatoes, leave them about two weeks to so the skins harden, and then I'm going to lift them. I don't like to leave my potatoes in too long because of this we have a lot of slugs around here if you can imagine we're out in the middle of nowhere so i'll do a couple and then i'll finish it and show you show you it done ready for harvesting i've already done nearly four rows look just this bit to do so i'll take this off and then show you the whole bed done as you can see this i've had no problems like some people's had a lot of problems with blight etc i seem to have got away with it here i've been quite lucky i have been spraying now so right so i'll take these off and snip in the tops you see just take them off you can also see all the weeds you've missed with the hoe while the potatoes have been there take those out now there's an odd nettle in it, but there's a big nettle there, look. Just take them off and then I cut them with the secateurs, it's as quick. Now what to do, all these potato horns as they're called i take down and put them on top of all my brass and wood bits that i've saved up all summer now when the crops lifted and gone i actually always have a bonfire on where the potatoes were and it's nearly all wood anyway then i collect the ashes up store them and because this will be the onion bed next year then we can put the, the ash back on once we put the onions in because it's high in potassium and it's doing the world of good. But these will be burnt with the brush once they dry. Well that's the potato tops taken off. As you can see it's a, it's a good chance to get rid of all those weeds that we've missed as well with the hoe while we've been doing it. It's still one of them. Just take those off. The other thing I want to watch for is this. Where we've disturbed the earth and the potatoes are showing, well, if we don't cover that up soon, that's going to turn green. So we need to cover that. Just keep an eye on that while you're cutting. I have checked those other rows. And there's one more thing we need to show you, is these. Now, the potato is selenium, which is a member of the tomato family or the tomatoes a member of the potato family whichever but you will get these growing on your potatoes now be very very careful with these these are actually quite poisonous so if you've got children or even animals take these away from site i put them with the stuff and burn them you always get them on the potatoes they're called potato apples but that's the wrong name for it they they're not nice so there's one or two in the rows i should just pick those up and put them in with the with the horns to make sure they're burnt 
Oh, look. Have a look, remember what they look like. They won't turn red or any other colour. Just keep your eye on them. Hello there. We've done the potatoes as you can see now. Now I'm just going to lift the last of the beetroot. We've been taking beetroot for salads, little bit of bottling, but this is the big guys that's been left behind. So it's a case of I need to clear the ground now because if you see that white post, the little white post denotes this is one of the beds for next year. It's all split into three, so this will be the onion bed. So I need to get them clear and get the land prepared. So beetroot lot, simple to lift. Just pull it out, clean it off a little bit. Now, no cutting here. Put your hands each side and give it a twist, it's done. Yes, don't not get too far in. So I'll just go down, some will be a bit, you see these are the big guys, these will be for bottling these. Some will be good. That's a double one there, I don't know how we've got like that, I don't know. They'll bottle, I'm sure she'll sort them out. We'll take three more out, not just to show you. That one's not so big at all, is it? I'm still full of cold by the way, so I'm still sniffing a bit, do excuse me. Now, as you can see, if we get the land empty, I can start and prepare it for next year's crops, which in this bed, which is bed A, will be the onions and the beans and the peas. So they really want a lot of feed putting in. And we know how we're going to dig it, don't we? Because we did that last week. But not double dig, it'll only be single dig this one. That's your single dig it and just break the bottom. There you go, look. Right, so that's, that's lifted the, the last of the beetroot. There's just a couple that, see that lot, it's blown, blown to seed. So don't use that one, that'll go to compost. Chop it up though before you put it on the compost. Likewise, that one lot has gone to seed. It's been knocked over anyway. Chop them up, put them on the compost heap. We don't really want those. Right, that's the beetroot. As you can see, there's one or two in there that will fill a bottle on their own. She assures me that even though they look a bit big, as she prepares and works them ready for bottling, there's any a bit wood, she reject those anyway. But the majority will be fine. And that is, once bottled, that's a year supply of gains. They'll keep us going till this time next year, hopefully. Okay, so now we'll go up to the fruit cage and see what we can do up there, shall we? Just quickly before we go up to the... Uh, fruit cage i just want to say about the tomatoes as you can see they're getting a lot there now i'm having to harvest them every day because if i don't if i don't harvest them the birds will so i shall go through every evening before i finish and i'll take all the colored tomatoes off i will lose i don't mind sharing a few with the birds they'll only pick so many and they go to the next one so that's what i do every day as you can see it's quite a heavy crop well we're getting this nice weather so we need to get them right and, and get them in these will be the ones that my wife will use for preserving drying etc but i need to get them out because we will get late blight with these you always get late blight on your tomato so the sooner we can get them ready the better so sunshine please right in these tomatoes just before we go into the fruit cage i'll just show you what we're going to do with these dwarf french beans they are more or less finished now and if you remember we leave the roots in so what i shall do now is i'll just cut them off I shall lift them, there's quite a few good beans still on them. I harvest them. I won't do it this moment because it's too too hot and we need to get into that cage. So we'll harvest them, take all the good beans off as you can see. I will show you the finished product when we're done. This will be the last harvest, so we'll take everything. Obviously it's going to take some time, so. so I shall have to leave this for a minute and do the others in the fruit cage. If you leave them much longer, you can see you don't want those any bigger. They're, 
that size is they'll probably be rejected at the house when they get to that size but i'll send them up anyway i'll send them up and they'll come back down for the compost heaps but we'll try it right as you can see we just picked uh, a few of the raspberries we picked the ones that are ready there's plenty more still to come my wife was given some blackberries and so she's going to mix them with the blackberries and make me uh, or make us shall i say uh, a raspberry and blackberry jam after we've had some for tea with some cream very nice that will be but that's the raspberries bit there's plenty more to come just looking across there's plenty more of the run of uh, the french bean the climbing one still to come as well so we're going to have a bumper crop we'll be filling several people's freezers this year with beans while we're in the fruit net we thought we'd just pick over the climbing french beans already we've got quite a few there's still a lot to come and as you can see they're still flowering so we won't take these out yet we'll just keep them going if it gets a bit dry i'll give them a drink and they should be all right they'll keep cropping for some time yet hello there we're uh, just finishing the end of the dwarf beans i've actually cut the plants off as you remember to keep the nitrogen in and this is the crop that we've got it makes the leeks stand well when they're off do excuse the mower my neighbor's mowing his lawn but it'll be gone in just doing the end of the dwarf french beans that we grew i've actually cut them off left the roots in and um, we've took the whole of the crop as you can see it's quite a quite a crop but the the plants had more or less finished flowering so it's the best way to get them up get them blanks get them all in the freezer ready for the winter we've just uh, popped up here to show you what we picked away from next door's mower so you've got all the beans there's two trays as you can see i picked the tomatoes they look a bit green but if i don't get them at that stage out of the garden the birds will take them in the morning so they have to be lifted and then ripened in the courtyard raspberries absolutely beautiful still enjoy those and a big pile of beetroot look a bit dirty but that's the way they come but when they're bottled and finished they'll be absolutely beautiful we'll look back and remember harvesting them Right, so here we are at the fruit cage as you can see the celery it's growing well but i don't think it's getting the height for it's supposed to be self blanching but it's looking a bit too green for me so i'm putting these on it's a bit of corrugated cardboard and if you roll it up before you use it and then i pop that round and then i pop a bit of string around as you can see and i'll do I'll do half a dozen and we'll see what happens. Usually you have to pile soil up and everything on celery to get it to whiten a little and to stretch. But in doing that you get all the dirt in. So we'll try this way and we'll see how we go. Right, we're down. We're on the brassica pack. All been prepared. If you remember all the digging we did. It's had its, uh, the base loosened so these brassica roots can get right down into it. I put plenty of lime on and it's been lightly forked into just below the top surface if you remember when we said and now i'm just going to put a bit of cabbage in i've already put some kale in a few weeks ago and some sproutings in now i'll put a line of cabbage here and as we get towards late autumn winter we'll take this cover off but it has made a decent job keeping the butterflies off although we have got one or two holes in them i think that could be slugs because this weather we're getting now the slugs are really coming out now it's warm and damp they've been growing in cells but because of the heat today i've had to pop them in this pot to hold them until we started uh, the video so they're not growing in there they're just growing in in a normal tray so what i'm doing we'll put this one in i'm gonna have to tread on that i'm trying to use boards so i don't sink into this land so plant them quite deep and firm they must be firm push them down if you have to with the trowel so i'll just rip these five in and that should do for now and get all the root that's it all the root in put it in quite firm plenty depth plenty of root and a little bit of compost with it not to the bottom but these are going to stand there in the winter with all the wind and the snow in it they want to be down deep and get that root real far down in we go and just push them down tight 
There you go. In you go. Nice and tight. So even though the ground is very, very wet, I will give these a drink. There's the the label that says that the cabbage. That was so I didn't put another row of ground in next to it. Put the covers on just to get us through to winter to keep the butterflies off, etc. You'll have to excuse next door's chickens. I think one's about to lay an egg, so that's what all that noise is about. So that's the brassicas. I'll get up, push on with this today. I've had to use boards because remember, if your soil's too wet, don't go on it. You'll just compact it down, and that defeats it all the work we've done. That'll be it with the brassicas. Hello, everyone. Friday again today. Been a good week. We've had some good heavy showers this week so we haven't been able to do quite as much in the garden as we like but we'll catch up later on I'm just here in front of this hibiscus it's uh, it's always flowers this late in the season but very very nice no scent or anything but beautiful flowers and the bees love it also the bottom flowers the chickens like so it's been grown as a standard for <laughs> to keep them off it but it's a, a lovely bush there's also blues and all sorts of colors but we seem to like this my wife likes pink so we'll have pink and that'll about wrap it up for this week thanks for watching and hopefully i'll see you again next week oh just before i go want the olympics great i really enjoyed them so i'll with a bit of luck we'll see you all next week then bye now